Hi, welcome to Pyography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to create the Little Girl Portrait Artwork. This is the third installment in my portrait tutorial series. And like the others, I will take you through all of the steps involved in creating the artwork. Plus, I will be testing out another brand of watercolor paper. So let's get burning. Image Transfer Print the image onto standard copier paper. Then flip the printout over and coat the back of it with graphite. I recommend using a graphite pencil that is in the B range. The graphite does not have to be uniform in coverage, but make sure to cover everywhere that you will need to trace. I will be burning on watercolor paper by fluid. I secured the paper to a rigid board using white artist tape. This will keep the paper from warping. Secure the printout, graphite side down, to the board or paper that you will be using with two pieces of tape. Now trace over the picture. I use a mechanical pencil for tracing because I don't want to have to sharpen it. Plus, it keeps a fine point. But since the pencil is hard to see, I will color over the pencil using a red pen. So you will probably see little bits of pencil lines here and there, and that is why. Use a combination of solid and dashed lines when tracing the image. Solid lines are used for areas that have clearly defined edges, like the iris, the nostril opening, the crease on the eyelids, the side of the face, etc. Dashed lines are used along transitions where the color changes. Basically, the dash lines indicate where the shadows start and end. Before you remove the image, lift it up and look for any missing areas. I forgot the right eyelashes and the highlights on both eyes. Once everything has been traced, then remove the image. Workspace Setup Let's discuss a good workspace setup. The artwork should be in the center, right in front of you. The reference photo should be nearby and placed on the opposite side of your predominant hand so that it is always visible. I'm left-handed, so for me, the reference photo is on the right. Lastly, keep scrap material nearby to test out how dark the burn marks will be and to blot the pin tip on. Pyography. Use the shader of your choice and burn along the edge of the upper eyelid and the crease above it. Then start burning in the shadows between those two lines. I started out using circular motion and then switched to pull away strokes for this. After the shadow is blocked in, then use the razor edge of the shader to burn along the edges of the iris and over the nearby pencil lines. Then burn in the inner side of the eyelid and the top portion of the iris. Initially, we will be blocking in the areas around the trace lines, then we will erase the pencil marks and smooth out the color between all those areas. Erase pencil trace lines as soon as they are no longer needed. Then, work your way around the eye, blocking in the shapes made by the dashed lines. The only lines you should use the razor edge of the shader on are the solid lines. Always use the flat of the shader when burning along the dashed lines, as this will ensure the edges stay softer. The dashed lines represent transitions where the shadows get darker or lighter, and we need gradient shading along those transitions. As I work, I am using a combination of circular motion and uniform strokes as my burn method. 
If you are not familiar with my terminology, I have a video that explains them. I will put a link to that video in the description below. Rotate the board as needed so your pen tip stays in optimal position when burning along the outer edge of the face. This will ensure the edge is clean and clearly defined. Switch to a writer pen tip and burn darkly around the edges of the iris. Then, reburn over the eyelashes. The base of the eyelashes are much thicker than the ends, so always start the burn stroke at the base of an eyelash. The reason is that burn strokes start out thicker than they end. To make sure you get a nice tapered point on an eyelash, quickly lift the pen tip up and away from the board at the end of the burn stroke. Now darken up the top of the iris to a dark brown or black color. Then, if needed, reburn over the eyelashes so that they are dark in color too. To the left of the iris, the edge of the eyelid is visible, so burn that to a tan color. I am using uniform strokes and circular motion for this. Darken up the eye around the reflection. Then burn a gently curving arch just below the halfway mark on the eye. Below this line is where the eye gets a little bit lighter in color. Burn in the upper eyelid. I am mostly using uniform strokes for this. Also, darken up the shadow along the eyelid crease. I am using really short pull-away strokes. Continue to work on darkening up the upper part of the iris and reburning over the nearby eyelid as needed. I am using the same burn strokes that I have been using all along. If needed, rotate the board when burning along the outer edge of the iris. Your pen tip should be in optimal position so you get clean, crisp, and clearly defined edges on the iris. Finish burning in the dark portion of the iris. There is a slight reflection along the left side of the iris that I made medium brown in color. I did this because I didn't want it to seem like it was the white of the eye. I purposely chose to burn the lower portion of the eye considerably lighter than the reference photo shows. After the lower portion was blocked in, I burned a bit randomly to give it some tonal variation and added some lines that radiated towards the pupil. Now block in the upper eyelid and the eyebrow. With the eyelid, I am using a combination of circular motion and uniform strokes to burn it in. Treat the eyebrow hairs just like the eyelashes. Burn each hair individually. Start the burn stroke at the base of the hair and make sure to burn them in the direction they grow. Creating realistic artwork requires careful observation of the shadows on the reference photo and replicating those shadows in your artwork. For example, the eyelid is slightly darker above the iris and this slightly darker area extends to the eyebrow. Let's block in the bridge of the nose between the eyes. This area is slightly darker on both sides, and the closer to the right eye we get, the darker the shadows on that side. Also, we start to see some of the eyebrow hairs in this area. Lightly burn over the reflection and then burn over the white of the eye. The top and bottom should be slightly darker. Then darken up the lower eyelid. There is a slight dark circle under her eye. Now let's darken up the cheek to the dashed line that arches over from the nose. This is the transition line where the shadows get darker below. 
I like to use circular motion when burning over and near transition lines. Circular motion tends to create soft edges, and we need soft edges along those transitions. Another thing that will help keep the transition soft is to use the flat of the shader while you're burning. The more metal that is in contact with the board, the less likely obvious lines will form. The ultimate goal is to have gradient shading over the transition lines. Burn in the solid trace lines on the right eye. Keep in mind that just because I'm using the razor edge of the shader does not mean that you have to. If it's easier, use a writer pen tip. Notice how light I am burning the lines. Pale lines are easy to fix and hide if a mistake is made. Burn along the dashed lines close to the eye using the flat of the shader. We want to get the lines defined enough so that the pencil marks are no longer needed. Once you reach that point, then erase those pencil lines. Now switch to a writer pen tip and burn darkly along all of the outer edges of the iris. Also, burn around the light reflections on the eye, then burn in the pupil. It is a bit tough to see it in the reference photo. Afterwards, add a pupil to the left eye. Now darkly burn in the upper portion of the right iris. Then, burn in the eyelashes. Like before, Start at the base of each eyelash and pull the pen tip outward towards the end of it. With the right eye, we see the underside of the eyelid along the inner part of the eye. This area is in shadows, and I am using uniform strokes to burn it in. Now, start burning in the shadows around the eye. Basically, we are burning in the shapes created by the dashed lines. Later on, we will create gradient shading to smooth out the transitions between those shapes. I am mostly using uniform strokes as my burn method, but I do use some circular motion. The right eye I burned in a bit differently than the left. First, I burned pull-away strokes along the outer edge of the iris. The strokes all start on the edge of the iris and are pulled towards the center, or the pupil, of the eye. Then I burned thin pull-away strokes along the pupil that radiated outward towards the iris edges. Afterwards, I darkened up the eye, leaving a small area lighter in color like the left eye has. Lastly, I burn some dark thin lines on the iris that radiate towards the pupil. Then, I tried to make the left eye match the right eye or at least look similar. I much prefer how the right eye turned out, but I do admit I deviated from the reference photo when I did it. Now resume burning in the shadows around the eye. Or, if it's easier to think of it this way, burning in the shapes created by the dashed lines. As I burn in the shapes, I use a process I call constant comparison. This means I look at the shape on the reference photo and decide if it is darker or lighter than the adjacent shapes. Then I decide how much of a tonal difference is there. A little means the colors are just a shade or two apart. A lot different means the colors are a number of shades apart. Then I burn in the shape to match my observations. Erase the pencil marks when they are no longer needed. The pencil lines need to be removed to make sure we don't smear graphite around the paper. Also, the pencil lines will interfere with the gradient shading that we will do. 
If needed, rotate the board as you work. As I am working on the voiceover for this video, I have become aware of the numerous mistakes I have made, like burning the underside of the eyelid so that it is similar in color to the iris. It should be much lighter than what I did. Now burn in the lower eyelashes. They aren't as long or as visible as the upper eyelashes. Then burn over the white of the eye. The center, next to the iris, should be the lightest area on the white of the eye. I am mostly using circular motion for this. Right now I am using circular motion to start the gradient shading that transitions from the shadow on the crease to the upper eyelid. I am also fine-tuning areas, like the darker area on the lower eyelid. I generally block in areas and then re-burn over them to build up the proper color or tonal value. How many times I re-burn over an area just depends. Usually what happens is I have burned in several areas and then decide that the tonal differences between the areas isn't right. At that point, I start re-burning on the areas until I get those tonal differences correct or what I think looks better. Looking at the eyebrow, we see that it starts out as just a few hairs on the left side. Once we are even with the iris, it gets much thicker. Now I will be honest and admit, I don't do a good job with eyebrows. By the time you see this video, I have completed three more portraits in this tutorial series. The eyebrows continue to be my least like area on all of the portraits. Now fill in the upper portion of the eyelid with color. The color, or darkness level, is darker by the eyelid crease and lighter near the eyebrow. I am mostly using circular motion for my burn method, especially near the crease where gradient shading is needed. I also use some uniform strokes. Uniform strokes are great for areas that you need uniform color in. It is possible to create gradient shading with uniform strokes, but I generally prefer circular motion for that. Next, burn in the side to the right of the eye. There is a gentle curving shadow that extends from the eyelid. Below that, there is a brighter area. Make sure to keep the edges of that brighter area soft. You want a gradual transition. Now burn in the next shape created by the dashed lines. This shape is the beginning of the shadows that make the cheek appear curved. Remember, as you are working and you get more shapes burned in, it is pretty normal to discover that you need to fine-tune areas you've already burned in. If you see a spot that doesn't look dark enough, like for me that was the area on the lower eyelid, then re-burn over it. Switch to a writer pen tip and re-burn over the eyebrows. The dark dots or blobs at the start of some of the burn strokes are the result of having my pen tip too hot. To fix, I should have turned the heat down on my burner or blotted the pen tip on scrap material to remove the excess heat. I burned hairs that I started at the base of the hair and ended it at the tip, and I also did the reverse. I started the burn stroke at the tip and ended at the base. The left eyebrow, I used the razor edge of the shader to create it. The writer pen tip was easier because it didn't cut into the paper like the razor edge of the shader did. Now let's tackle the nose. Start by burning along the dashed lines using the flat of your shader. When you burn along the upper edge of the nostril opening, 
make sure your pen tip is in optimal position. Continue to work your way around the nose, burning along the dashed lines. I am using the same circular motion and uniform burn methods that I have been using all along. Our current goal is to get the dashed lines burned in well enough so that they can be erased. With that in mind, it is important that you burn in areas with enough contrast so that you know where the edges of the nostril are. A good example is the shadow next to the right nostril. On my artwork, it is a bit tough to tell where the edge of the nostril is, so I'm reburning over the shadow to increase the contrast before I erase the dashed lines. You should always do a quick check for a similar situation in your own work before erasing the pencil lines. After the pencil marks are removed, then work on the gradient shading along the transitions on the nose. Also, burn in the unburned areas on the nose. Make sure to consult with the reference photo often. The reference photo is your guide to know how dark to burn in the different areas. The key for good photo analysis is to use constant comparison. For example, this spot on the nose is the lightest area on the face. The iris is the darkest. Look at the nostril openings. You can see that they are much darker than the nose highlight, and they are much lighter than the iris. I would put the openings in the middle between those two tonal values. As you burn in areas, compare the darkness level with adjacent areas. Is it lighter or darker? How much is it lighter or darker? Then burn in that area based on your observation. Depending on your experience level, this can be difficult to do, so using a value finder can be very helpful. To use, simply compare the area you are interested in with the black and white side of the finder. Check values until you find the closest match. Then use the corresponding sepia side to burn your artwork to match that value. My example isn't a perfect match, but hopefully you get the general idea. I have a video that explains how to make one. I also have a written version of that tutorial on my website. I scanned the value finder that I created and made a PDF file of it. This way you can print one out if you don't want to make one. But depending on your printer, it may differ in color from the scanned version. I will put a link to both the video and the blog in the description below. Again, a reminder to rotate the board as needed to keep your pen tip in optimal position when working along edges. Make sure to rotate the reference photo to match. Another benefit of rotating your work is that it might make it harder for your brain to see recognizable shapes, like the nose. This allows you to concentrate on the tonal values better. Some of my observations are the dark tan line that runs along the edge of the nose. There is also a dark edge on the nostril. There is a light edge on the center of the nose. There is a curving shadow along the nostril top. And there is a slight highlight along the bulby or rounded tip of the nose. I can't promise that rotating the board will help you, but it doesn't hurt to try. Now we will finish darkening up the bridge of the nose and do any fine tuning on the upper portion of the face that is needed. Begin the lower half of the face by defining the left edge of the mouth. 
burn the dark shadow at the corner of the mouth to a brown color. Then burn a dark line between the lips. Also burn along the edge of the upper lip. Afterwards, finish defining the left edge of the mouth by burning in a portion of the cheek. Then burn in the shadow or depression found between the lips and the nose. Now burn over the pencil lines, keeping the color in the light tan range. Once the pencil lines have been burned over, then rub over the area with a standard pencil eraser to remove the pencil marks. Reburn the dark line between the lips, then burn pull away strokes along the upper right lip. Start the stroke on the edge of the lip and pull it down towards the lower lip. Now burn in the shadows along the bottom of the lip and any unburned areas on this side. Work on the shadowed right side of the lower lip. The corner is pretty dark, almost as dark as the left corner. Then finish burning along the top portion of the upper lip and fine tune it as needed. The lips have a lot going on with all of the shadows and slight reflections. Plus, there are creases or vertical lines on the lips. Replicating that requires careful observation of the reference photo. The more that you do this, the better you will become at it. It just takes time to train your eye and brain to look past the generalized shapes and start to focus in on the details. I do recommend rotating the board and the reference photo and viewing the lips upside down. I think that this will help you see shadows and small details better. Plus, it will keep the pen tip in optimal position when working along the bottom edge of each lip. While the board is rotated, burn along the outer edge of the face. This position keeps the pen tip in optimal position, and that ensures you don't accidentally burn past the edge of the face. Like always, do any fine tuning as needed. Then start burning in the shadows on the upper mouth between the nose and the lips. I continue to use circular motion and uniform strokes as my burn method. But that does not mean that you have to. Use what works best for you. Take your time and pay close attention to the reference photo to decide how dark to burn in this area. Afterwards, finish burning in the left cheek. Make sure you have gradient shading along the transitions, like the shadow at the corner of the mouth. It gets gradually lighter in color as you get closer to the left edge of the cheek. The lower lip needs to be darkened up and a few crease lines added to it. Plus, the reflection on the upper lip is a touch too bright, so that needs to be toned down. Take a critical look at your artwork and determine what needs to be done. This will be easier if you compare small sections at a time. For example, just look at the lower left side of the lip and do any fine tuning if needed. Then compare the lower right side of the lip and so on. Now the only thing left to do is burn in the rest of the skin. Let's finish up the area between the nose and the lips. The nose is casting a bit of shadow onto this area, and there is a slight highlight next to the upper lip. Let's work on the chin. I like to burn in the shadows first, so I'm working on the shadow that starts below the lips and extends to the crease on the chin. After the shadows get burned in, then I work on softening the edges. This is just another way of saying I create gradient shading along the transitions.
The transitions are where the dashed lines were originally drawn. The transitions represent where the color or darkness level changes. I continue to use circular motion and uniform strokes as my burn method. As I have run out of things to say, you will get to listen to Todd's music until we get to the next segment, which is signing your artwork. Signing your art. With all of my artwork, I first sign with a graphite pencil. Then I use a micro writer pen tip and burn over the pencil lines. Afterwards, I rub over the area with a standard pencil eraser to remove any residual graphite. Fixing mistakes and about the paper. I used an ink pen eraser to lighten areas that got too dark. I also used the sharp edge of a knife to gently scrape away dark blotches and blobs. Both the knife and the eraser abraded the paper and made it even more difficult to burn on. I burned on Fluids watercolor paper by Speedball. I didn't like it. It tended to get blotchy especially in areas that I had to do a lot of reburning on. I don't recommend the paper. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you found the information helpful. On my website, Pyography Made Easy, I have the written version of the tutorial along with the reference photo. Well, thank you for watching, and I will see you next week.